IRDA is the supermost body or it's the topmost body which tries to control all the insurance companies in India. The applicability of law varies from people to people, from section to section. All the insurance companies today have become a part of the system. Good morning and welcome to the session 7 of Principles of General Insurance. In this session, we are going to talk about the regulatory framework of GIC India. That's the General Insurance Corporation in India. Now, GIC is supposed to be the largest company in terms of general insurance and they have been quite there for some time in terms of protecting the assets and the property of various organizations. So GIC is supposed to be the oldest and they are also supposed to be the biggest in terms of involving into this business. So let's go forward and try to understand the entire regulatory framework that is available for the General Insurance Corporation of India. Now moving forward. If you look here, the history of the GIC. GIC was formed for the purpose of superintending, controlling and carrying out the business of general insurance. So if you look at the outlook of the company, the aim of GIC was to be a monitor of the general insurance business. They weren't actually involved in just doing the business but they also wanted to be the regulatory body of the entire general insurance. They always believed that general insurance needs to have a controller, needs to have somebody who can understand the business, who can understand the wavelength and then take it forward in terms of running the organizations. Now, as soon as GIC was formed, the government transferred all the shares it held in the general insurance companies to GIC. So which means to say that government took GIC into confidence and they transferred all the values of the share that was available that is in terms of the general insurance which government was having they put it to the hands of GIC. Simultaneously the nationalized undertakings were transferred to Indian insurance company. So all the banks all the governmental organization like the railways or if you talk about Indian shipping, the aviation sector, probably the chemical sector, the agriculture sector. So all kinds of governmental body properties were transferred back to the hands of general insurance as a guardian of the asset. So this became a very, very important perspective altogether. Followed by, after the process of mergers among the Indian insurance companies, Four companies were left as fully owned subsidiaries of GIC. So after this entire setup happened, after the entire turmoil of making GIC as the supervisory body and getting into the picture of General Insurance Corporation, GIC became a leader in this business and GIC started having four subsidiaries under them. So by the size, by the operation, by the controlling authority, GIC became the largest in terms of general insurance. Now moving forward, the entire organization of insurance business is nationalized by the General Insurance Business Nationalization Act of 1972. So in the year 1972, because this year is important as this was the year where the banks were also nationalized. So the General Insurance Corporation also got nationalized under this particular year under the act of GIBNA. This act is very, very important. We call it as the General Insurance Business Nationalization Act. So from this act only, GIC became completely as a government of India undertaking procedure. Now the government of India through nationalization took over the shares of 55 Indian insurance companies 
and the undertaking of 52 insurers carrying on the general insurance business. So government of India now took the initiative saying that we will take forward all the assets under our control and we will bring it under the GIC and at any given point of time this would be considered to be our property, our take care kind of thing. So this is where the insurance business got completely remoduled. The insurance business got a completely a new lease or a life altogether from which, you know, the business started turning over and GIC predominantly became the largest general insurer in the country altogether. Now, GIC was formed in the pursuance of section 9, subsection 1 of the GIBNA Act. So the government took the initiative of forming a general insurance body called as the General Insurance Corporation of India. So they got a full-fledged title under the section 9 of the Act of GIBNA. And it was incorporated, which means to say that it was given the status of a complete corporation on the date 22nd November 1972. So probably every year on 22nd November, we celebrate the incorporation date of GIC. So this is roughly about 50 years old company right now for us under the Companies Act of 1956 as a private company limited by share. So this is the biggest advent of insurance that started in our country. Now you can look here, GIC was actually given a separate status of an insurance company who is going to take care of all the factors, that is all the insurance matters, all the properties, everything is going to come under them. And that's how the entire ideology of General Insurance Corporation became even more interesting altogether. So this is how they have taken into confidence, they have taken into account how to build the entire system. So GIC going forward became a separate company, a private company holding its own shares and it has got all the government assets under its control. Now, moving forward, the regulatory framework of GIC. Now, insurance as a business has got several kind of regulatory acts that come into picture, which means to say that the entire body of the insurance organization is again coming under several acts like the Companies Act of 2013, the IRDAI. Now, IRDAI stands for Insurance Regulatory Development Authority of India. So, it comes under the Obligatory Sessions Gadget. Then it comes also under the Insurance Act of 1938, the General Insurance Business Act of 1972, which we were talking about, followed by the General Insurance Amendment Act, which happened in the year 2002, followed by the IRDA Act and the Memorandum of it, Articles, which is quite but normal. It is a part and parcel of the Companies Act altogether. Now, you might be wondering that why there are so many acts or the regulatory framework that is coming in for a governmental organization itself. The reason being is that insurance is actually not just about a business which can be done in silos or which can be done by itself. Insurance itself is a company and it involves in several kind of financial transaction. It involves in several kind of contracts. It involves itself in several kinds of businesses by the nature of its organization itself. So that is why the companies that involve themselves into the insurance business will need to go through all these kinds of acts which will actually make them even more stronger, even more visible in nature. And they have to comply to all these acts that have been prescribed as by the government laws altogether. So going forward, we are going to see each and every act individually and try to understand the importance of regulatory framework of this great company. So now moving forward, the IRDA sessions obligatory act which we are going to talk about in excise of powers conferred under the subsection 2 and 4 
of the section 101A of the Insurance Act 1938. Please make a note of it. This is very, very important because the Insurance Act of 1938 is the authority after consultation with the adversary committee that was constituted under the section 101B of the Insurance Act 1938 with the previous approval of central government hereby makes the notification as an obligatory session of financial year 2019-20. Now what does this mean to us all together is that IRDA is the supermost body or it's the topmost body which tries to control all the insurance companies in India. IRDA is the regulatory body just like the SEBI, just like the RBI. This is the regulatory body which controls the insurance business. So they had actually come up with a regulatory framework, a law in which they said that under the section of 2 and 4 of the Insurance Act 1938, section 101A, which confers the powers, which confers the companies all the legitimate activities and powers, all the facilities, all the rules and regulation in order to carry out the business as mentioned, as specified altogether, that has been told in this act very, very clearly. So this was approved by the central government hereby making it an obligatory session, which means to say that it's a mandatory, it is a part of the obligation. You have to follow this protocol, whether you like it or not. So it becomes an obligatory session altogether for the financial year starting 2019 and 20. So this is the first part of the IRDA Obligation Sessions Act. Now, moving forward in the same law, we also try to understand the applicability. Where is this law applicable? Is it applicable to all the companies or is it applicable only to the insurers? Definitely this law is applicable to all the reinsurers, to Indian reinsurers and other applicable insurers as per the provision of 101A of the Insurance Act 1938 para 2. Now, why do I want to mention this very carefully is that every law that has been framed by the government of India has its own specification altogether, which means to say that the applicability of law varies from people to people, from section to section. That is a very, very important and a very close factor to be watched about. Why? Because now if I'm going to talk about Companies Act, it is applicable only to a company. It might not be applicable to an educational institution. When I'm going to talk about insurance, it's only applicable to the people who are involved in the business of general insurance, life insurance, reinsurance. So that is why the applicability of the law is very, very important. Where it is coming into effect? Where is the impact of this law? The impact of this law is coming into the people who are into Indian reinsurers and other applicable insurers as per the provision of section 101A of the Insurance Act 1938. So this is how it matters. This is how it comes into picture. Now, percentage of session. This is very, very important. The percentage of session of some insured on each of the general insurance policy is to be reinsured with the Indian reinsurers, which means to say that the percentage at the rate, what percentage of the sum of has to be reinsured shall be fixed at 5%. So this is very, very important. What is the obligatory sum insured? So that much percentage has to be reinsured with the Indian Reinsurance Act, that is about 5% in respect to the insurance attached during the financial year beginning from 2019 to 31st March 2020 that is up to this current year except for the terrorism premium now this is a separate thing premium seeded for the nuclear pool wherein it would be made nil so in the case of terrorism or in the case of nuclear act or in the case of factors that are leading to any other which is not mentioned here now those things will not be a part of the obligatory session altogether 
other than that any other insurance that has been spoken about a financial sum worth of about 5% of the total value has to be kept has to be insured by the general insurance policy so that is what is the rule all about this entire obligatory session is to be placed with general insurance corporation of india only so that is very very important it is to be placed only with the general insurance corporation not with any other company now you cannot go ahead and say that sir i have placed it with a private company is it okay definitely not why because this is applicable only with the general insurance corporation of india where we are going to to consider this as a very very important aspect now moving forward now we are going to talk about the very very famous companies act of 2013 now what does this companies act of 2013 everybody knows the provision that has been made in this act shall apply to companies incorporated under this act so gic is also a company and we know that it was incorporated on 22nd november 1972 as a private company by the government of india so very much it is incorporated under this act or under any previous company law now only thing is that it was incorporated at that point of time it was companies act of 1956 now it has been amended to 2013 but yes gic was also been placed as a private company given a status by the government of india as an incorporation now insurance company except in so far said provisions are inconsistent the provisions of the insurance act of 1938 or insurance regulatory development authority of 1999 except which is not been accepted which is not a part of this two acts then they will not be in this factor altogether so we are their insurance company except as been mentioned in this provisions are a part of it similarly banking companies except in so far said provisions banking companies which are not as far as the provisions are inconsistent with the provisions of the banking regulation act of 1949 so as per the act which is mentioned banking regulation act of 1949 or insurance act of 1938 or when we talk about the irda act of 1999 when we talk about these act in this act if they are not being mentioned if they are not being taken place that's where an exception comes in or else these all these companies will be a part of the companies act of 2013 they cannot be taken out separately so that's why companies act is a very very important concept that shall try to concentrate upon the factor of how the company is being recorded regulated as a factor as an incorporation altogether now moving forward companies act continuing we will also talk about companies engage in the generation of supply of electricity except as that has been told by the electricity act of 2003 suppose if they have mentioned some exceptions then they will not come into it any other company generated by any special act for the time being force in so far suppose for example under some special act a company is being created which is taking a deviation out of the companies act of 2013 which is not mentioned as per the law which is not being governed as per the law then only we would not be including them other than that any other normal company any other normal regulation shall be considered very much under the companies act of 2013 so that's why such a body corporate incorporated by the act of being in force as a central government may by notification will specify that on behalf subjected to such exceptions modifications or adaptation as may be specified by the notification now there are times when the government will go ahead and mention certain companies or mention certain specific rules which are governing those companies all together in that case in that scenario in that moment yes they are all considered to be specialized they are all considered to be a specific act all together so that is why this is very very important for each one of us to understand 
to know and to take it forward that these are all companies which are being mentioned under certain specific rules under certain specific obligation if it is not being mentioned if it is not being covered under any specific act or any specific rule altogether then you can probably look into this companies act and the companies normally follow the same procedure that has been prescribed for any other sector or any other body in general now moving forward we shall also talk about the next one called as the IRDA Act 1938. Yes, this is also very, very important. Why? Because in uh, 1938, we were also trying to talk about the subject and this becomes a very, very important aspect here. In this act, unless and until it has been mentioned, other way around, not about the insurance, other way other than insurance, then we will not be covering here. But here we are starting with the word called as actuary, which means that actuary possessing such qualification may be specified by the regulations of the authority given by the IRDA under the subsection. Why? Because all the insurance company will have the business of actuary and that is the main part for them because they undergo the actuary situation, they undergo the actuary process, the actuarial process by which they will evaluate the risk, they will find out the premium value, they will assess the situation. So anybody who is getting into this actuary business has to come under the regulations of the IRDA Act of 1938. Now, this is also established under the IRDA Authority Act of 1999, which was amended later. Now, the policyholder includes a person to whom the whole time of the interest policyholder in the policy is assigned once for all but does not include which means to say that an assignee thereof whose interest in the policy whose interest in the policy is defeasible or is time being subjected to any condition now normally what we say is that suppose you are the policy holder that will include you as a person to whom whole of the interest of the policy holder so you are full time involved in the policy which means you agree to all the terms and conditions of the policy and it has been assigned once once it has been assigned to your name and for all but it does not include it will not include a person thereof whose interest in the policy is not included suppose it might be a third party you are trying to involve somebody else it might be a relative or your friend but that person the entire objective here is defeasible which means it cannot be taken into account at all and it is time being subjected to any kind of condition suppose there are other conditions suppose there are other terms and factors now that cannot be considered as a part of the original insurance contract which was signed with you so that is why we say here very clearly that the policy holder will be the person who singly agrees at the first level that yes I agree to the terms and conditions that has been prescribed here. Now followed by when we come back here we will also try to understand that approved securities. Now what is the meaning of approved securities? Government securities and other securities which have been given the consent by the central government of India and the state and guaranteed fully in terms of the principal and interest by the central government. Now there are many government companies which have been also trading in the stock market like BHEL, Bharat Electronics Limited, Bharat Earth Movers Limited, BEML. Now you can talk about HAL. These are all government companies which have been created. BPCL, Bharat Petroleum Corporation, or you can talk about HPCL, Indian Oil. All these companies are being created under the Government Act. So all these companies which have been created, they have an approved security, which means Government of India is approving those securities. They are giving the vouching for that factor that yes, they are approved by the central government. You don't have to worry about them. You can entrust your ideology into it that's no problem it has been approved in terms of both principal and interest by the central government so it becomes very very important at that point of time now any other debentures or securities for money which has been again issued under the government of India which means the legislature the approval on behalf of the trust 
of the corporation altogether must be given under the proper guidance which means they have to be given under the proper guidance say for example trust in that presidency in that town in that corporation altogether so this is where they have to take into confidence and they have to do the business so this becomes very very important for all of us it becomes highly important at this juncture to understand that whatever might be the nature of business whatever might be the investment that comes in, they have to be approved by the state government, by the state authority, then only we will say that these are approved securities or debentures. Similarly, shares of a corporation established by law and guaranteed fully by the central government or the government of a state where the repayment of dividend principal and interest is always guaranteed. Now, this is also important. There might be a lot of state holding corporations like the LIC. Now, Life Insurance Corporation of India is a state owned company or an organization by itself. So, in that, suppose these companies are investing, they are going to put the money or they are going to take any kind of interest into it in terms of acquiring the shares or anything. Again, we go by the factor saying that the shares of the corporation are approved by the government of India. So in case for the investor, the repayment of the principal, the repayment of the interest or the repayment of any kind of factors that are being involved inside, that are being taken into factor, that are being taken into consideration is very much covered under this act. So that is why I always say that these factors will matter a lot when we are talking about the regulatory framework of general insurance corporation of India. Now moving forward, the general insurance business act which we were talking about of the year 1972, this is very very important why because based on this law, based on this act only, the company itself got incorporated. So the act might be called as the general insurance business act that is the nationalization now let me just go through that word nationalization which means to say that it is a government of india undertaking the government gives the approval the government takes the responsibility that this company at any point of time will be given assurance by the government so in case if there is going to be a default in case there is going to be any problem the government gives the backup saying that yes i will take care of the investors the money Money will not go anywhere. So the government gives the authorization, it gives the factor saying that yes, I give the approval all to work. And it is hereby declared in this act for giving the effect of policy of the state towards securing the principles specified in that particular clause C of article 39 of the constitution. Now what is the explanation for that? State has the same meaning in the article and the declaration of the policy under the section 9. So under the section 9 it has been clearly de defined what is a state under what act it is coming in. So what are all the approval guidelines? Where is the government giving you the assurance? All these factors have been mentioned under this Business Act of 1972. Followed by, we are also going to talk here about the various act. This is quite, you know, theoretical, explanatory and elongatory in nature. Why? Because this requires a little bit of understanding for you in terms of the legal framework that comes into picture. Now, one of this thing is that in this act, unless the contest otherwise requires definition, that is acquiring company. Now, let's look into that, which means any Indian insurance company where a scheme has to be framed involving the merger of one Indian insurance with another. That is now we are going to talk about amalgamation of two or more such companies, which means to say that an Indian insurance company company in which any other company has been merged or has been formed as a result of amalgamation. Now the word acquiring a company also has been very very clearly mentioned and specified here which means to say that at any given point of time suppose an Indian company is going to acquire another insurance Indian insurance company which are you know they are going to merge their schemes they are going to merge their company their procedures and their system has to be mentioned as per this act only they can then take that particular factor. Now appointed day means such a day which has been later than 
that 2nd January 1973 as per the central government by notification. So it says that in section 1 of 1956 Companies Act, it means companies and corporation of the General Insurance Company of India which has been incorporated. So as I told you on 22nd November 1972 this company has got incorporated and not before 2nd January 1973 after that they have become a complete independent body they have been ruling the general insurance business by themselves so it becomes a statutory body by itself which will take care into the insurance business and be governed by the rules and regulations of the act which has been mentioned under this section 9. Now moving forward the General Insurance Amendment Act which happened in the year 2002. What was the amendment altogether? In short, the commencement this was also called as the amendment which means we are trying to bring in some changes from that 1972 and it came into force in the year 2002. This was given a government approval. That's why it was printed on the official gazette altogether. So that is where this becomes an approved word from the government of India saying that this has come into force. This has come into an appointment altogether followed by. Now, what does this amendment act say in the year 2002 is that the amendment said that hereby the 1972 act is going to be referred as the 2002 act. And if there is going to be any form of the business that is going to be mentioned, that is about the nationalization and other factors, they are going to be covered under the act of 2002. So we are not going to refer back to 1972, but we are going to refer back to the 2002 policy altogether where the words of superintending controlling carrying words of the general insurance has been taken forward and the words of carrying on reinsurance business has been substituted. So they removed the words called as superintending controlling carrying and other factors of general insurance and they have replaced with this word called as carrying on the reinsurance business. So we are no more going to be that big words of controlling and other factors and in the subsection they also say that provided that the central government may be in notification increase or reduce the authorized capital or the other factors that has been subscribed in case which it feels to be fit. So what we try to say here is that in the 2002 we bought in certain change in the words of the general insurance the body the title of the general insurance followed by if there was any reduction or addition of capital needed or some changes needed in the overall structure of the company. The company would feel right or the company would feel fit at that point of time that was brought into action that was brought into the picture altogether. So that is why we claim that this particular act was very very important at that given point of time which made some changes altogether in the business in the activity. Now moving forward the IRDA act of 1999 which is very very important it's also an amendment which means to say that the chairperson during this act we also establish words like authority chairperson who is the regulatory authority what are all is being constituted here what is the factor that has been bought into it and the central government resolution that has taken place in the year 1996 intermediary reinsurance all these words have been bought inside the irda forms the central body so whatever they bring in here is the final word in terms of the building of central government they have also bought in the word member which means he is a whole time or a part time member or a director of the irda altogether that includes the chairperson chairperson is already designated as the head of the IRDA committee and there has been regulations prescribed words that has been bought as a part of the IRDA Act 1999 in order to make the system even more clear even more precise and they have been doing a great job in terms of controlling the investment in insurance companies they have also been looking into the FDIs that are coming into insurance and how the insurance company need to process the claims and take it forward. 
So in case if there is going to be any mismatch about the scheme, mismatch about the words that are being used by the insurance company, you can raise a complaint to the IRDA and they would be the compliance officer looking into the changes and looking into the charges that have been applied against the company. Now moving forward. The IRDA Act also tries to talk about the expressions which were not mentioned in 1938 or the Life Insurance Corporation Act of 1956. Plus, they have also started working towards the, you know, the Nationalization Act. They have included all these factors inside. So even the LIC, the GIC, all the insurance companies today have become a part of the system. They cannot be ignored. They are a part of the system and they will continue to remain here associated in the act, associated in the formation and they have to oblige and follow the IRDA rules and regulations. Moving forward, with this we come to the conclusion of the session. I hope and believe that the session was interesting, useful and educative. In the coming session, we are going to look into the GIC as a body, as a management organization itself. Though it is a very large organization, though it has got different kind of business, but then it is quite interesting also to understand how they have been formed and what is the nature of business that they are doing in India. Until then, please stay tuned to this session. Please listen and understand the session very, very clearly. All the concepts that have been mentioned in the insurance is very, very important for you. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session today.